Okay, this video is um, going to give you a brief overview of citations and citation styles, why and when you have to do it. It's not meant to be a be-all exhaustive um, video by any means, but hopefully it'll get you started. So if we ask why citations, why do we cite at the end of a paper, um, these are your basic reasons. You need to give credit where credit is due, uh, basically to avoid plagiarizing, which is giving the appearance that ideas you're presenting um, are your thoughts rather than the work or idea of someone else. Um, it's also a way to give your readers a way to follow behind you with your research, um, whether that's a professor uh, that's looking to follow up on you, or whether that's one of your interested readers who wants to know where you got your source. Anything that you reference in your paper, whether it's a book, a newspaper, a film, or a personal interview with your friendly neighborhood academic librarian, all of those things need to make it into your works cited list. Um, they should all appear on your works cited list. They should all be cited somewhere in your paper. Uh, because again, anything that you've used to compile your work um, needs to be referenced. Um, that's, the, that's the most basic drilled down version of it. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of walk you through generally how to build a couple of citations and um, some resources that are available to you online at the library and on campus. So where we've started here, um, this is online at the Hacker Handbooks, which you'll see in more detail in a minute, um, which is the library's recommended um, citation help out online. So we've opened their sample MLA research paper just to kind of give you a sense of what a finished research paper should look like in MLA style. So you can see at a glance, um, the sample paper here runs from the title page, and we'll scroll down and it'll go all the way to Works Cited. And on the way there, um, if you'll notice, there's a bunch of citations. Um, you can see throughout that um, there's linking to page numbers, author references, things like that. So those are your in-text citations. And then when you get to the end here, this is your Works Cited list, um, which is where you're actually going to physically list all of the things you used um, to write your paper. So you can see that for this sample paper, they've um, linked all kinds of stuff. Here we've got a, a website. Um, a little bit farther down the page, they've linked an academic journal. Um, below that, they've got a book, like a standard basic book. And, and down at the bottom of the page, a newspaper article from the Wall Street Journal. One thing you can see at a glance that they all have in common, though, is they basically all need the same information. Things like author name, um, publication title, um, book title, article title, that kind of thing. So for your in-text citations, they're pretty simple too. You can see right here the student has quoted the American Management Association. Um, they've used a statistic and they've given a page number. So the way these work is when they've used a specific piece of info like that, they're crediting um, that organization. So me as an instructor, if I want to follow up, I can come to the Works Cited page and I can look alphabetically and find, oh, there's the American Management Association. This is the source the student used um, to write that portion of the paper. So I can follow, follow up, I can check the validity of the source, that kind of thing. So on the library homepage, some resources that'll help you with all this. Under the Resources tab, first off, we have the Understanding Plagiarism Tutorial. Um, plagiarism you want to avoid at all costs. And of course, like we said before, that's basically just the idea that you would be using someone else's ideas intentionally or otherwise um, and not giving them credit and like letting people believe that they're your ideas. So to come into this Understanding Plagiarism tutorial, if you click through these four um, segments or modules up here at the top the way I'm doing, you'll see that it's very quick. You can probably read through this in 10 minutes, um, but it's really going to be a helpful jumping off point if you're having some issues about um, what plagiarism is. Um, right under it is the Citation Guides link. You'll see I clicked that there, and now we've got a link to the MLA, APA, and Chicago Manual of Style Guides. These are those hacker handbooks guides that I just uh, referenced when we were looking at the sample paper. So if we were out on the wider web, this is what the hacker handbooks look like. Their MLA guide again, which is what I'm using kind of as an example for this video. Um, but they have these guides for each of the different styles. Once you get the hang of them, they're very easy to navigate. Hacker is by no means the only one. There's, there's things like the Purdue OWL um, and other really good sources for online um, citation information. We just at the Edison Libraries, our recommended one is the Hacker Handbooks. We think they're the best and we use them all the time when we're helping students. So um, we think you guys would like them a lot too. So this is the general layout of the Hacker Handbooks. They've got a basic jump off page with a little easy to navigate menu off to the left. Um, if we click something like in-text citations, it's going to give us a, a big overview of in-text citations. And then if we were to scroll down this long page, it just shows us every conceivable way to do an in-text citation. But we don't just have to randomly do that. We can come in here to where we've got this little handy dandy Dropbox. 
and um, it's going to sort of organize the page for us. Up at the top, we get, we can see um, basic rules. So, um, for instance, that quote we saw from the American Management Association, the author was named in a signal phrase. Um, you can also put an author in parentheses. It shows you how to do it if you don't know your author, if you don't know your page number. And then after that, um, they have all the weird stuff. Um, if you have something like a multi-volume work, you're trying to cite something from a dictionary or a government or historical document, some weird thing that you might encounter out there in your research, um, all of it's here on the Hacker Handbooks. You just have to find the, the type of source. You have to know the type of source you're citing and then find it on that list. And to that same end, right under in-text citations, you'll notice that it's got a works cited list. And it works the same way. It's a big, long page. But if you pop open the drop-down box, it starts by showing you all your author rules. So if you had um, a basic author, great. If you have a billion authors, great. If you've got the American Library Association as your author, you can pick organization. If you don't know your author, it'll show you how to do that too. And then beneath that, for your works cited list, um, it goes into every conceivable variation of, of a source. So you've got all these different types of books, um, a whole bunch of different types of articles that you would find in periodicals or journals magazines. Underneath that, online sources like websites or emails. Um, Audiovisual sources like DVDs and pictures. Um, and then down at the bottom, your weird category here, other sources. So if you wanted to do a personal interview with your librarian and cite it, um, you'll see down there number 83. That's how you would cite it. So um, these handbooks are really easy to use. Um, I'm going to click on basic format for a book just to show you what it's going to look like when you do that. And you'll see here that they show you an annotated list of exactly what you need. So for a basic book, you would need to know the author's first and last name, the book title, um, the city of publication and the publisher, uh, the date of publication, and uh, the medium, which of course if, if it were a print book, it would say print. Um, and for online things, you would, you would vary that up to web. Um, and keep in mind, again, this is not a comprehensive thing. Don't furiously type notes. You can watch this video as much as you want. Um, come in and talk to us at the library and we can walk you through this. Um, we'd be we'd be happy to help but um what I'm gonna do as a way of example just to show you how this works in real time is I'm gonna go into the Edison databases and I'm gonna type in my student ID number and the last four digits of my social security number to get access to the to the library databases and I'm gonna find an article and I'm gonna show you how to find all this information you need to cite so we'll go under the general databases and choose academic search complete and when we get in here um, we're just gonna do a really basic search uh, for climate change. Actually we'll make it a little more specific to make sure we find good stuff. We'll do climate change and Florida and fish. Uh, now when we open it up we see some really good targeted results if we were doing a paper on this topic. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the first one and then I want to walk you through the record to show you where to find your information that you'll need to build your citation. So when you open the record right away you're going to see there's a ton of information up at the top. You've got your article title right here just a bit below that, um, you've got your authors, so there's, there's a, a multitude of them for this paper. Underneath that, you've got your source citation. So we can see this comes from the Journal of Coastal Research, the January 2011 uh, edition. Volume and issue number is listed right there for you, as well as your total page numbers. Um, so basically, everything you need to cite out of academic search is right here, uh, which is one of the great benefits, I should point out, of using uh, um, a database, because all that information is easily accessible. So now we can come to the Hacker Handbooks, go down to Online Sources, and then pick number 40, Work from a Database, and click on it. And it's going to show us exactly how to cite our database article. And you'll notice that just like uh, we did at the book, you need your author's name, you need your article title, you need to know what journal it came out of, as well as the volume and issue, year, and page numbers. You need to know the database, which of course in our case is Academic Search Complete, web, because that's where we found it, and then the last part is the date that we accessed it, today's date. So again, all of that information is right here. Article title, authors, source with all of that source information that is required. You know we got it out of Academic Search Complete because we clicked and checked on that database. So it's all right there for you. And if that's not easy enough, notice off to the right now under the Tools menu, I've clicked this Cite button. This database and many others will actually cite the article for you. So when I click Cite, you'll see as I'm scrolling down, all of these different citations are this exact article in this in these different styles. So here's your MLA citation already built for you. Um, 
by the uh, Academic Search Complete Citation Generator. Now, I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out that even if you're going to use this citation generator, it's a good idea to go over to the hacker handbooks and double check it. Um, the companies here don't don't have a, a guy who sits around all day making sure their citations are perfect. So um, you always want to double check your your accuracy before you turn something in. Um, now let's say we had a book. Uh, I've sort of time traveled over to the library catalog and, and I've done climate change again and now I've got a, a list of ebooks here. So if we open one up you can see very easily that all our citation information is right here. Uh, we've got an author, the book title, we can see that Josie Bass published it in San Francisco in 2012 and we see our total pagination. Um, now that's just in the library catalog, but if we go to the physical book, um, and in our case this is an ebook, you'll see that the, the title page has our author, it has the book's title, and if we scroll through, and I'm doing this electronically, but our ebooks are the same as our print books. So if we scroll through in a print or an online book, eventually here we're going to hit what we call the copyright page. And that's where we're going to find that, if we had to off of a print book, that's where we're going to find the information on the publisher and the publication date. So you can see right up here at the top that we would know that this book was published in 2012 and right underneath it by Jossie Bass and their address is in San Francisco, California. So if we were to pop over to the Hacker Handbooks for a basic book, which this is because it's just a book with one author, so it couldn't be easier, we would just scroll down to that basic format for a book and when it opens up we know the author and the title because it was right on the book's title page we also know that it was published in San Francisco by Jossie Bass in 2012 and in our case for this example it would be web because we got it off of the the internet but if you had pulled it off of uh, the library shelves it would just look exactly like that print so and you can see as we scroll down a bit you know no matter what kind of crazy book you may have in hand or article um, the hacker handbooks is going to show you how to cite that so uh, it couldn't be easier one last thing I want to pull to your attention before we go, under our services tab on the library's homepage, you'll notice that we feature a link to the Writing Center. Um, I cannot uh, speak highly enough of the Writing Center. If you've never been there, um, no matter what campus you attend, there's a Writing Center on your campus. They have usually really good expanded hours and you can go there and speak to a staff member or a student tutor and they will coach you one-on-one -on, -one, um, on this kind of stuff um, how to work with your citations they can tell you if, if you're on the right track and if not they'll get you on the right track so go see them if you have questions or come see us at the library